the conference call, and then we can turn that into a webinar. And um, so as you guys know, I had you go ahead and call in. Is that Katie Arnett or Arnt? Nope. Who else just joined us on the phone? Okay. Well, I'm hoping that others will join us. I will type again here. If you cannot hear me, did someone just join us on the phone? Hi, yeah, this is Courtney Wiedemann from Oregon. Oh, hey, Courtney. Thank you for Hello. calling in. Great. Um, please call in using the information below. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully, uh, for those that are, I see we have several on the computer, um, and I have a couple callers, but hopefully we can get everybody to where they can hear us. So for the American FFA degree, um, the place where you start is on the FFA.org. So if you go to FFA.org and you log in using your login information, now there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, I usually go to I usually go to my dashboard and I hit state staff. And then I can hit Application Center, and that will take me there to the American SFA degree, and I can open it that way. You can also um, go to Participate, Awards and Degrees, um, American SFA degree, and then where it says Apply here, click there, and then you're back to the Application Center. But essentially what you want to do is get to the um, Application Center, and it will give you the choice of applications you want to look at and then you can pull up and click on the American FFA degree. So as you can see, I can look at anyone in the, in the state's American FFA degree. So I want to encourage you, if you have questions at any time and would like me to answer a question for you about your American degree, I can look at yours at the same time that you can and look at yours. And we can look, be looking at them together, and I can be answering your questions as we go along. So Caroline Denny, since I have you on the phone, I'm going to go ahead and open up your application. Are you okay with that? Sounds good. Okay. So we can see that um, the very first page is the instructions page, which isn't, it's very helpful. It's not, um, it's not an insult to read the instructions. It's always a good thing, actually. Um, but the very first icon, the play button, does have a little video that walks you through this application if you were to have any questions about it. One thing you should know is that the, um, as you go from page to page, it will automatically save your application. So when this little floppy disk comes popping up, uh, it will automatically save what you're doing on your application. Um, the tab key will take you from one cell to the next. So if you click tab throughout the application, that will help you travel from one cell to the next. Um, you begin your application on the basic setup page, and I'll show you that. But you're, then you're just going to go in order one page to the next as you're completing the American degree application. Um, the cover section pulls your information from the SFA um, website. Um, there are no decimal points on this application, so round your numbers. Do not use decimal points. Um, and you don't have to put in a negative number in a cell. It will compute that for you. This little green question mark is the question icon, and it will answer questions that you have. So it will give a definition of what they're wanting in that blank, and then it will also give you examples. All the checklist items must say met or yes to not only qualify for the American degree, but to also be able to print the American degree application without it saying draft. Uh, one more thing that I want to make sure that I show students, I'm going to go back and open up another application. So on this instructions, Caroline has already opened up her application, so she's in good shape. But as you see, item number 12, this application is disconnected um, from your AET records. Click here to lock the application. This will also say click here to unlock the application from AET. Because most of you will have either paper books or easy record books, all of you will either have paper books or easy record books, you're going to click it to unlock it. This one is locked to AET, and I'm just going to leave it that way because it is somebody else's um, uh, application, but that is important. To get started on the application, you do need to click the unlock button. Um, 
Cassidy, have you started one yet? No, you haven't. But Courtney, you have. Can I look down at yours? And okay, so hers is locked, and so she's already clicked unlock too. So you guys are in really good shape. You've already taken care of that stuff. So that's excellent. So going back to Caroline's, we're going to look at her cover page. On the cover page, if her information wasn't in here, let's say her member ID number wasn't in here or her chapter ID number wasn't in here, she would click on this load from FFA.org and it would drop that information in there. But since hers already does, she's already done that. The top box is all just logistics that we need to know about you and your family. The middle box is your chapter, your chapter name, high school, um, ag teacher's name, and email address. The next box is your date of birth, have you paid your dues, when you got your state degree. The last box is all about your GPA, where you're going to school now, what you're doing. So that is the cover page. Looks like Caroline's all done with her cover page. The next page is the basic setup page. Now on this page, this is where um, you select what your SAE type is and you put in your beginning date. The ending date automatically drops in there as 12-31-2016. But you put the day your record book started right here. And so Caroline's records, as you can see, started on January 1st of 2013. She selected entrepreneurship. Those are the pages that are over here on this left-hand side are entrepreneurship pages. Those are the pages that are relevant to her SAE. So you can see that information is there, okay? If she were to pick placement, we would click on placement. It's probably not going to let me do this because this is Caroline's app. But if she were to click placement, um, she would um, then get placement pages over here on this side. On this page, from your record books, whether they be paper copy or easy records, from the white pages, page six, that information from your very first year, so value beginning at beginning date, so Caroline will go back, and what you all should do is go back to your January 1 of your beginning year, 2013, and that page 6 in the white pages of your record book, that's where this information comes from. Your cash on hand, checking and savings, all the values that you have in the beginning of your record book go right here in sections 3 and 4, okay? So your inventory assets and your liabilities. Then your ending value date from those white pages as well. So your last year of your books, 12-31-2016, page six of the white pages, you put your ending value dates there. And then these other value dates will come in throughout the book. Down here in the bottom in section five, I'm hovering over the green question mark so you can see that the source of cash gifts, that is cash gifts that are provided to you by others to either support your SAE or uh, that you might have invested in your SAE, whether it be a scholarship or a gift from your grandparents, any kind of cash gifts outside of your SAE, those would be listed there. Um, this one is, these are non-ag, or these are ag-related non-SAE personal earnings. So this is like babysitting, this is winning an award, selling a personal asset. So if you had a vehicle um, and you sold it, the vehicle doesn't count towards your SAE, so it's a personal asset, and you would sell that. You, the money you would get for that would go on this line. Line C, this is where you would pay federal income taxes, payroll taxes. For any student who's placement and has a job somewhere else, and all of your that you've paid for FICA all those times and your payroll tax, they get added up for each year, and then that total number gets placed right here in 5C. This is also where you would, if you bought a car or you bought a truck, or a, a, a something fun like, I don't know, an iPad or Pokemon cards or something, you know, ticket to the movies, um, going out on dates. All of that personal expense that you would have would get totaled up and put here on that 5C, okay? So a lot of times students will ask where do I list personal assets. Uh, the value of that when you paid for it gets listed there. The value of what it means to you gets listed um, in A and B. And then um, also educational expenses. Since you guys are American degree recipients, or hope to be, um, your college expenses, you can put your cost of tuition and your books can be, can be claimed on 5D. Okay? So this is the basic setup page. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, great. No. We'll then move to her entrepreneurship page. Um, this is, so Caroline doesn't have anything entered in here yet. But I'm going to go ahead and enter in something. I'm going to click 2013, and I know that we're going to say you have animal systems, right, Caroline? Yeah. 
And you yes. have a beef project? Yes. Beef cattle, downy farm. And size and scope, Caroline, I'm just going to make things up. She's got two cows, one heifer, one bull. Does that work? Yes. What kind of cattle do you have, works. Caroline? Um, Angus and Hereford. Angus. And her, yeah, typed correctly. That might help me. Okay. And so I'm going to type that in, and I'm going to click on the Add button, and then you can see that's how you add your enterprises. So Caroline might want to, she might want to edit that, and she might want to change. The two cows would be Angus, so she'd take it off, take a bat off, take off the heifer and the bull because they're her birds. Oh, I didn't edit that. I forgot to take that off. Okay. I'm going to click on update. That updates it. And now I'm going to add, I'm going to put animal systems. I'm going to go beef cattle again, and then I'm going to put that heifer, and then I'm going to put that she's Hereford, if I can type correctly. Okay, so you can do it either way you like. The description gives you the opportunity to describe your operation and your enterprise any way that you like. Um, Caroline, I'm going to leave those in there for now, but when you want to delete them, all you have to do is hit delete, and then it asks okay. you, are you sure you want to delete this item, and then it says okay. So I'm going to leave that one um, hef that Hereford heifer in there for right now, okay? okay? Sounds good. You can delete that later. All right, so then we're going to get into her income and expense statement. And these are, Caroline, we're showing your numbers. I hope you're okay with that. Yeah. But as we're looking at her numbers, you can see she's got her beginning inventory and her close and her ending inventory, and she has all of her pieces in there. Now, a couple things that we need to make sure that if she has it right in here. I'm very happy with that. So you can see that Caroline has here value of production transferred to the other enterprise or transferred to non-current bartered or labor exchange. So Caroline, tell me what 1F is. Is that uh, feed expense that you get paid because you work for your family's operation? Yeah, I think, yeah. So yes, you can see I that believe. those numbers match up exactly and they drop down from 1F to 2D. So, and those numbers have to match for that to be balanced. Okay? Any questions with that? The other way in which that, you can put a number there. If a student has a, a heifer and you say she increases when she gets bred and she becomes a cow, and let's say she increased by $1,000, you put that value, that $1,000 in this line, and then you would transfer it into your transfers in from operations, and they become, she becomes a non-current asset, that cow does. And so that $1,000 has to be recorded there. So a lot of times students will ask, well, I know my animal appreciated in value because she went from a heifer. That You're allowed to do that one time. Um, and when you do that, you just need to make sure that you put the value that it gets transferred in 1F and then down to 2B. And that's how they can increase in value. And it gives you an explanation right there when you hover over it. You raise a breeding animal that has a market value of 1200 but is retained as a newly developed mature breeding animal. The transfer is $1,200 and aligns to $1,200 transfer in a non-cash purchase. Okay, so that explains that to you. The other way that you transfer money is if you worked for it and then they paid all your feed expense, and that would be a non-cash expense that you worked for. So that explains those lines right there. Otherwise, this information in your record books comes from pages um, 12, 13, and 14 um, in your record book, in your paper record books or your easy record books, okay? <clears throat> this is where you would keep register of your harvested and growing crops. You put the values in there, the value that you have on hand on 12, 31, 2016. So if you did have, you still had 100 bushels of corn, this is where that value would go. If you had seed left over, the plant, if you had, um, let's say maybe you raised chrysanthemums and you had seed value, that's where you'd put the seed value right here. Um, any market animals that you still have on hand to be sold, you would put their value here, the amount that they are and the description there. So every time you want to add an entry, you would put um, seed quantity 100 
um, ending value, we're going to put 100, and then we're going to click on Add. You can see it does add. I am going to go ahead and delete that one off for you, Caroline, so that doesn't get confusing for you. We're going to delete. You. Check with me. Are you sure you want to delete that? It says yes or it says okay, and I can click on that. So that's where we put those values. We have another page of inventory values. This is where you put non-depreciable, draft pleasure or breeding animals, and then de depreciable animals. This is where you also put machinery and equipment, any land improvements or buildings, and any land um, that, that you own and the value of that. So this, these two pages, this ending current inventory is on this page and any non-current inventory is on this page. So that's where those inventories go. And again, that comes from your, the beginning white pages of your record book. If I'm going too fast, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to jump in and ask me questions. I'm happy to answer those. The assets page, any questions? I'll pause. I'll make a nice long pause. Okay, so the asset page, actually you can't type anything in on these pages. All this information comes from, and if you want to know where it comes from, click on it, and it will take you back to the page in which you entered it. So you can see that the assets page comes from the basic setup page, at least the beginning asset does, and as well as this ending asset for this one. So um, we'll go to the liabilities page, same thing. Um, can't type anything in here, all that information is generated from the basic setup page. So the, uh, in the original information you put on, on basic setup will come up in the last assets and liabilities. Next page we're going to click on is the net worth. So um, as we look at net worth statement, all of these numbers, again, are coming to us from another page. And right here it says not balanced. And um, Caroline is saying, well, what's not balanced about it? Well, as we can see, back on basic setup, Caroline hasn't told us how much money she has at the ending value. Most likely, she has somewhere near the 25,577, and when she does, then that would say balanced. So what this application is telling you is, and I'll hover over it so you guys can read it with me, it says if your value is positive, you've either overstated your asset values, or you've not reported a liability, or you've understated your net income. So it says please review your entry. If your value is negative, which it's negative if it's in the parentheses, if your value is negative, I lost my question mark, there you go, you may have either understated asset values, so she hasn't said what her assets are at the end of her record book, so that's very, hopefully that's clear to you. She's understated her asset values, or she's overstated the liability, or she's overstated net income. So what they're saying is every penny that you say you've made in your SAE on your income and expense page or on your um, placement page where you've worked, you need to show that you've either spent that, invested that, or still have that. And that's on the basic setup page. Basic setup page shows you that it's either still an asset or that you've invested it somewhere or that you've spent it somewhere. So they're saying every dollar generated for your SAE must be accounted for as either still in your pocket or still in your bank account, you've invested it back in your SAE, or you've spent it somewhere else. It doesn't matter which of the three you've done, you just need to make sure that it's accounted for penny for penny. Otherwise, it's going to say not balanced, and it won't print your application without saying draft. Actually, it'll say not met. So um, any questions about that? Great. Moving on to productively earned and invested. So we're saying not met, and I know we're saying not met because this net worth piece is not balanced over on this end because she's showing negative for all of these numbers. Once Caroline gets her um, assets put in on this basic setup page or shown where she's invested some, then, she can, then it's going to say met and she's not going to have any problems earning her degree. But that's what it's going to look like for right now until those numbers jive. Again, this is not a page that you can type into, but what I want to point out to you is you earn the American FFA degree one of three ways. You productively earn and invest at least $7,500 and you earn $10,000. That's one way. The next way is you productively earn or you productively invest at least $2,000. You earn... 2000 and you have at least 2250 um, unpaid hours. That's the next way. And that's in a, for an unpaid hours with a, with a placement student. And then the next way is a student either productively earns, productively earns and invests 2000 earns 2000 
and then uses what they call the unpaid hours factor, which is right up here. Once you put in those unpaid hours, it will factor into that, and then unpaid hours um, at least 10000 And so once you, those are the three ways in which you earn the American SFA degree. Um, we'll open up somebody else's application here in a little bit, and I can show you um, one that says net. You maybe I don't know if anybody says net yet or not, but that'll give you an idea of that. Community service is the next thing. Community service is entered in just like everything else. Uh, you type in the event that you worked for. She worked at the women's shelter, and she worked for 25 hours, and we hit add there. Now we're going to see down here at the bottom, it says not met, not met, because for community service, you have to work at least three different activities and work at least 50 hours. So in 2013, she also uh, worked for Macon County Farm Bureau Blood Drive, and she worked 27 hours. We're going to hit add. Now it says met on the 50 hours, but she still doesn't have three different activities. So community service um, has to be, and you'll hover over it, this page represents involvement in serving organizations and groups and what your role is. So community service is not raking your neighbor's leaves, because that's just you volunteering and helping out your neighbor. Community service is working for a community event um, and then and recording what those hours are. And they have to be three different ones for at least 50 hours. So um, I could, my next one could be that I worked uh, county fairground cleanup. I forgive my typing. And I'm going to say that I worked 26 hours there. All of my hours, and so now I've met Matt. Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot to clean up. See, it'll catch you. There we go. Now it says met, met, because I have my 50 hours, I have three different activities. And let's say my hours were only 12 for Dove Foundation and 12 for Macon County Farm Bureau, but the next year I worked the county fair cleanup and I had another 12 hours and I got over 50. My 50 hours, 49 of the hours, or 48 of the hours could be in one activity and the other two hours come from two other activities. They don't all have to be equally distributed even though mine are. I'm going to delete those off, Caroline. Again, just okay. to clean up your application a little bit. We're just using you as our example. So that is how so, community service gets recorded. I have a question. Yes. Is that, like, is that like 50 hours total between all the years of our book, or is it 50 hours each year? Total hours of all the years of your book. Okay, thanks. Very, very good question. So the next thing is the checklist, and you can see that she's met um, we already know that our balance sheet is not balanced because of, and it takes us right back to that page. So that is the nice thing. Anywhere on here, um, all you have to do is click what's not being met, and it'll take you back there. We know that she's not met community service because I took those off of there, and we know she's not met productively earned and invested because we still have this that's off balance. So um, that is, this is the checklist. But when they all say met, 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 they all say met, then you can print the application. When you go to print the application, if it doesn't say met, it is going to say draft across it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is what the application looks like. If it says all met, the draft will be gone and ready for you to print. Now what I do want you to understand is once you get it to print without saying draft, go ahead and print at least your first page, get all those signatures, because there isn't a version number on the signatures page. And so then if you have to make changes to the rest of the application, it's okay. Just Then you just reprint the application and don't worry about the signatures page. But once you get the application to print without saying draft, then take your signatures page, get those signatures, and then if there's other things that have to change within the application later on, that is fine. But this is what your application actually looks like once you have completed it. Um, Basically, the first two pages are everything from your cover page that we put on there. Um, this page four of 14 is your basic setup page, the information you shared in the very beginning. And then the rest of the information as you type in goes into the following pages. Here's all your current inventory and non-current inventory. This is your income and expense pages. 
This looks like pages 8A and 8B from the old state degree. Do you remember that? That's what that looks like. Here's your assets and liabilities page, your net worth, and it'll say not balanced, so we know that's why it says draft draft on here. It says she's not met, so she, according to so far, we have an earned American degree, but once we get those numbers plugged in there, we'll be fine. Since we don't have anything typed into any service, there's nothing on that page. And then here's the checklist that we looked at. Looks just like it did online. And then here's the manual checklist at the end of the application. And it's asking, did you get all the signatures on there, verifying that they've been a member. This is for you and your advisor to do at the end of completing the American Degree application. But this is what the American Degree application looks like once it's been done. Um, again, if everything says met, then you, you wouldn't have the words draft on here. I am going to go back to Application Manager. Is there someone else online who would like for us to look at their application? Oh, yes. Okay, so this is Cassie Crouch. How are you? Hey, how are you? Good. You want me to go to Alex's? That, yes, in just two shakes. Yes, you can, though. I've got to change okay. something back because... Okay, I'm going to look at Alex's checklist. You guys can see that Alex is met on everything. And I'm going to click on print um, for draft. Let's oh, see. hold on Let just me. one. Nope, it's going to still print draft. Let's go okay. back. So the, here's my question. Okay. On the net worth statement. Yes. I have been over and over and over stuff. And so I'm not sure. I think it's because we have non-cash sales used at home, that line number five. I think it's double dipping somewhere, but I'm not sure where, because if you look down here at beginning ending value for letter E, it shows not met. Okay, everything I see, let's see, on the checklist you mean? Yeah, well, on like net worth, um, the literal go. financial balance sheet statement. Maybe refresh okay. it. Okay, so I see what you're saying. Okay, so we're that, if we're on the net worth page where it says not balanced, that $367? Yeah. You see that? Okay, There's what what's happened is there's $367 that aren't accounted for. So That's if correct. you go back to her basic setup page and since, oh, let me read it again. Back to net worth. All right, so it's a positive number. Oops, hover over. Positive number, so we've either overstated her asset values or we have not reported a liability or we've understated her net income. So if you go back to basic setup, and this is an easy quick fix, Kathy, but this huh? will give you a chance to figure out where it's from. If you yes. take that $376 and subtract it from 11207 Okay. And you change that number for us, and I don't, I'm going to do the math. Okay, okay, hold on. Yeah. So if you put in there 1083. 10831, yes, I uh -huh. just did. Okay, I'm hitting refresh. Now we're going to go to net worth, and it says net. So, so is there? So I have to go back into her um, record book then and adjust that cash value that, of her on that final number. That final yeah. number for her cash on hand checking and savings needs to match that. Now okay. that's the easy fix. Where that three seventy six is could be like you said in this income and expense statement. You know what I'm well, saying? Yes. And I've gone through in all those checks. So I'll look again. Like I'll okay. dive more into it. But that's but I that, just didn't know how to adjust it to see where it could be. Yes. So that's where the easy quote unquote fix is. So now I'm gonna show everybody what a complete so the application Thanks. all said met. Thank you. Yes. And this gives me a chance to show everybody this is what Alex's application now draft is gone and this application is ready to print and she qualifies for the American degree because you'll look on page, earn and invested, and she's met. She's met the degree requirements yeah. in all three places, and so all she has to hit is one of those options. But if you hit all three, you're good, and this application is, is then ready to print. So that is, that is the application itself. Does anybody have any questions about that? 
The other piece that I wanted to cover today, and I, for those of you who send in the intent, I emailed you this information today, the American Degree Information Sheet. Um, mm-hmm. This is just everything that comes along, the deadlines, everything. So today what I did was email all of you, reminding you of the webinar and sending you this link to this sheet. Um, I also sent all of your names to our section chairs. Our section chairs have between January 15th and April 1st to verify that you've completed all of the information um, to receive your American FFA degree. So if you have questions that myself or your ag teacher can't answer, your section chair is also another resource for you if you have additional questions. But your actual application is due to us um, by March 1. The completed American degree application with supplemental materials, um, and I'll show you the supplemental materials in a, in a bit. But you have to send us one of the, the original application with all the original signatures and then one copy of that. We use that copy to review and make notes and put um, uh, post-it notes on if there's any problems or questions about your application. Then the original is the one that gets sent on to National FFA. So we need an original and one copy to be sent to our office by March 1st. Between March 1st and March 10th, I will have a committee of retired ag teachers review all American degree applications. And then we put all the ones that are in a pile that qualify for an interview, and that usually is 95% of the applications that come in, very rarely does someone not get an interview unless there's something that just doesn't add up. But the nice thing is about this new application is if it doesn't add up, it's not going to print. So um, you're in good shape. This new application has got you in really good shape. So after the 10th, we will notify you of your interviews. Um, so when you send in your application on the 1st, if there is a date that you cannot interview, you do need to let us know which day you prefer, April 5th, 6th, or 7th, and if you morning, afternoon, um, if you live out of state or you're going to school out of state and prefer a phone interview, you can do that as well. And all you need to do is attach, put that on a piece of paper or a post-it note and attach that to the application. So then after the 10th, I will send out an interview schedule, um, and basically you'll just confirm with me, yes, I can do that interview, um, date and time, looking forward to it. Then we'll do the interviews um, April 5th through the 7th, um, and then we will do our final uh, selection of our candidates. And between April 11th and May 1st, you will be getting your official notification from the FFA Center from myself, um, and you'll be getting a letter, essentially. And that letter will invite you, confirming you're getting your American degree from Illinois or that you're being nominated from Illinois to the national level. We'll recognize you at state convention. We'll have a, a dinner recognition and um, and a very quick recognition on stage. And then in then our names will get sent to National FFA. And in late July, National FFA will notify you if there's they'll notify me if there's any problems. And then if there's any problems, I'll contact you and say, okay, there's a couple something was not right. We'll fix it. Everything is fixable, so don't get stressed if I have to contact you. And then in Early August, you'll get um, all the information from nationals, and you'll get all the information from nationals will come via email. So do make sure whatever email address you have on the application that that is correct. Now we talked about the application. We need two copies, the original and a copy. The supplemental material that come with the American degree application, we do need a copy of your most recent year's business agreement. So the 2016 business agreement from your record book, make a copy of that and staple it onto the back of the application. We also have the skills, competency, and knowledge page. Um, and it's not under the downloads yet, but I did email that to all of you today um, that sent in intent, and I will have that under the general downloads. But you just have to fill out that page, the business agreement, and then the last page you have to attach is the committee asked for um, a brief description of your SAE, no more than a half a page, tell us how you got started, how it's grown, and how it's progressed over the years. And then the next half of that page is just describe your personal goals, educational goals, career goals, where you'd like to see yourself in the next 10 years. So it's essentially three extra pages, one, the business agreement, two, the skills, competency, and knowledge, which came from your state degree application, and then three, which is really three, four, but it's just one page, half about your SAE, half about your future goals. And then... Um, then you attach those and you send those with your original application and your copy application. So submit the original plus one complete copy and send that to the FFA Center. 
Are there any questions about this information or the actual application that we went through? Again, I just want to remind you, I can pull up your application anytime you call and have a question. And just like I walked Mrs. Crouch through uh, the question for Alex Rui, I'm happy to walk you through and see your application and see um, challenges that you may be having and, and happy to answer those questions for you. So um, I think my information, go back to that. Yep, I think our information is on here. Make sure. I say I'm going to answer your question, but if my phone number is not there, that doesn't help you very much. Yep, I don't see our information on here. I see my email address, or should be. But don't hesitate to email us. We do have, yep, there we go, right up here. There's my information, so don't hesitate to call us if you have any questions. Um, just let me know. My extension is 101. I'm happy to answer any of your American degree questions or walk you through the process. Um, I don't want to rush anyone, but if, that, if there are no questions, um, we can wrap up this webinar, but I'm happy to take time to answer anybody's questions if you have them. I have a question, quick. Yeah. Um, in, on that signature page, it says that we have to have a signature from either the principal or the superintendent. If we uh -huh. are in college, do you want it from our advisor or or do you want it from our high school principal? So um, again, that signature page, um, that might be something that your advisor is just going to have to print off. Once you have the application done, have your advisor print off that page and get those signatures. Because you can see you need the chapter president's signature, you need yeah. your advisor's signature. Yep. So that's one of those things that once you have it done, and once it's in the PDF form, you can save it um, to mm -hmm. your a flash drive or a desktop. You can and then email it to your advisor and say, print off this page, please, and get those signatures started for you. So yes, you will need to have those signatures on there. The only one you won't need is where it says state advisor or state executive committee. I will sign that before we send it on national. Okay. Okay. I guess I have another question. This one is my, I had, my It's Katie Arndt uh, from DeKalb. I had talked to you about signature page um, a week ago or so, and mm -hmm. I didn't realize this, but my um, I told you my ag advisor is going on maternity leave. Well, it turns out uh -huh. we also have another ag teacher now at my high school. Um, would since she'll be on maternity leave, will that other ag advisor work for my signature yes. page? Or do, yes. okay. Yeah. I don't know if he's. Like if you would count as my FSA advisor, but they will for it will be for that purpose. That'll be just fine. Okay. And then I guess I had another question. Um, you were talking sure. about for pers like for your personal expenses and school expenses. Uh -huh. What if like we have like living expenses while we are at school? So like for instance, I'm paying for my groceries and all that sort of all those things, and I haven't started my application yet. Yes, no, groceries and living expenses do not count. They could be deducted here from your, you know, because they would be meals, entertainment, personal expenses, but they cannot be counted as an educational expense. Okay. And then um, somebody, or I was a little bit confused when it was explained to me by somebody else, but where would we put, like, for instance, you earn a scholarship for your tuition, where would you possibly put that? Okay, so scholarships can be listed right here. Mm -hmm. um, and they can also be listed as a cash gift right here. Okay. So scholarship is going towards like your SAE or, you know, it supports part of your SAE or educational expenses, then you're going to list it there. And if, if, it's, if it's not, if it's like winning an award that's not necessarily a scholarship that you would apply to your education, then you would list it in, in 5B. So 1A would be scholarships towards your educational expenses. Um, or 5A, and then 5B would be where you put any other kind of income. Okay, and then last one, I think, for me. Um, I am, I currently hold an agricultural position, and it is by salary, and it is also, it's not, like, I don't get the cash directly. It's deducted as a scholarship from my tuition. How would I indicate that then? So you would still indicate that as um, you would still indicate that as a paid hour, and I mm -hmm. guess since 
tuition type thing, I would put in like your semester hours that you're that they count as, and then put that in your as your gross earnings. Okay. Do you see where I'm kind of trying to show that here? Yeah. You would, yeah. Okay. So you're going to put that on your placement and exploratory as income. Okay. Very good. Any okay, other thank questions? You. Yes, and I'm going to go through my list as I look here. Um, I see Illinois Valley Cell. I'm not sure the 309238. I'm not sure who that is. Do you have any questions? That's Caroline. Okay, that's Caroline. We've got your questions. I know this is Kathy Crouch's number 309-360-3300. Um, 815? That's me. That's you. Okay. Um, how about 8510905? Nope. We're good here. Okay. I've got 309-678-3741. That's me, Erica. Okay. You got any questions? No, I'm good. Okay. And then I've got 309-278-7886. Yep, that's me. I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys all very much. If you don't have any other questions, and this concludes the webinar, I will stop recording us, but then after, and I'm going to do another webinar uh, later this week, and then after both those webinars, we will post them and share them with other, um, other students, other students, other American degree candidates. Um, as they come in. Um, the nice thing is hopefully all of you who called in today have received that email from me today. And um, so you can correspond with me directly via email and you can also know that I will be sending out reminders of when the American degree application is due March 1st and reminders of what needs to be attached to that. So we will have direct correspondence with you from here on out and just want to thank you again for calling in. Okay, have a great day everybody. Thank you, you too. Okay, thank you.